So now it's my pleasure and honor to present the Linus Pauling Institute Prize for Health Research. Now this prize is awarded in recognition of innovation and excellence in research relating to the roles of vitamins, essential minerals, and phytochemicals in promoting optimum health, and preventing or treating disease, and the roles of oxidative and nitrative stress, and antioxidants in human health and disease. So that's the name of the award. That's all of what's in there. Now that's not the only thing, and this year I think this becomes a little bit more prominent because the prize also recognizes successful efforts to disseminate and implement knowledge on diet, lifestyle, and, and health to enhance public health and reduce suffering from disease. So this is the outreach component that comes with doing research. Now, uh, just um, uh, as a little bit of background, the, the LPI Prize for Health Research is awarded every other year, and at this conference, or the Diet and Optimum Health Conference. So in the 20-year existence of the Linus Pauling Institute, the prize has been given eight times, so it's not done very often. Uh, three of the past recipients are present today, and they are Dr. Bruce Ames, Dr. Mark Levine, and Dr. Helmut Sees. Would you please stand up and be recognized? <laughs> now you're recognized from these names that these and the other recipients have made outstanding contributions to the field uh, named by the prize. So this is really, this, this is a very high standard for receiving this award. Now, how do we get to identify the award? So there's a procedure for this. You know, because this is an LPI award, so what we normally do, we um, convene a committee, and the committee collects nominations, and then the faculty deliberates about the nominations. So based on these deliberations, the committee decided to give the 2017 Linus Pauling Institute Prize for Health Research by acclamation of the faculty of the Linus Pauling Institute to Dr. Paltzfrey. Yeah. No, 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 not yet. So, Baltz, there is a laudatio, yeah? So it takes me a while to read all that because there's so much to say that I will read it first and then you come up and then you'll get the prize, okay? So this will take me a while. So the, the committee has comments, of course, and here are some comments on the committee. So Dr. Fry built two outreach programs at the Linus Pauling Institute that are locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally recognized. These programs disseminate and implement knowledge on vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals in relation to diet and, health and lifestyle. So this is the exact wording that you find in the name of the award. So the first outreach program is the Healthy Youth Program. And Simonia, yeah, you are there, is the first, is the founding manager of that um, uh, core or the, the program, the Healthy Youth Program. And Candice, where are you? She is currently the manager of the, of the Healthy Youth Program. Now, to give you an idea of the scope and size of the various outreach programs, and when I came on board, I said, What? You do all that? How is there enough hours in the day to do all that? And there's actually very small staff to take care of all these programs. So the HIP program is running. Uh, what, uh, all the stuff they've run, they have partnerships with community organizations, including Samaritan Health Services, Lynn Benton Lincoln Partnership for Health, Strengthening Rural Communities, Rural Families, Lynn Benton Health Equity Alliance, Willamette Neighborhood Housing Services, OSU Benton County Extension Service, Benton Soil and Water Cons Cons Conservation District, Corvallis Environmental Center, the Boys and Girls Club of Corvallis, 
and the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific Northwest. See, all of this, there's so much work going on. This is just enormous. So through these community partnerships, the HIP programs have been able to reach upwards of 1,200 children and families just in this past year. So you can see over all these years how many, stuff, how many kids they have helped uh, about nutrition and healthy lifestyle. This is just enormous. So furthermore, the HIP internship and volunteer programs provided more than 50 positions for OSU students. So this is also, can you imagine, if I have five undergrad students in my lab, boy, they keep me busy. They have 50 <laughs> students to gain leadership experience to build professional skills. Yeah, this is OSU is very much into leadership skills, and, and you provide all the, the HIP provides all the, um, the, the skills to do this um, for these um, young um, children. So that's the Healthy Youth Program. And the second outreach program is the Micronutrient Information Center. And we call it the MIC. So that's the, if I say MIC, I mean that's the Microinformation Information Center. So the MIC disseminates unbiased evidence-based knowledge on vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. Now, um, the information that's important is freely available. And that's important because, you know, what, what is today is freely available, not much anymore. On the MIC website, so Dr. Fry, assisted first by Dr. Jane Higdon, and more recently by Dr. Victoria Drake. Victoria, where are you? Please be recognized. Yeah, that's Vicky does all that. Secured funding for the MIC through corporate sponsorships, charitable giving, and grants. So this is, again, sponsorships are very important to keep that program alive so that people, the public, has free access to a lot of valuable and unbiased information. Now, just last year, and of course I didn't, I, I, I didn't do this because it already started many years before, so after several years of planning, the MIC team launched a new health and disease section on the website that organizes nutrition information by health and disease topics. So in the normal week, you start with the minerals and the vitamins and the phytochemicals and what, what, what are the health benefits, and now they have a second site where actually you go the other way. You go from disease and health and what nutri nutrients are beneficial in those uh, conditions. Now what the, that website is doing is summarizes take-home messages in a bullet point format. And, um, and incorporates nutrient flashcards and infographics to reinforce important concepts. So in the past year, and this is another thing that I didn't know about when I came, the MIC generated over 1.7 million sessions and 1.3 million visitors worldwide, and that's just one year. Now moreover, the MIC is available in Spanish. We have a collaboration with people in Chile and also, I signed actually the MOU this year for the MOE that we do this in Japan with the folks in, in Nagata. So soon it will also be, uh, the MIC will be available in, the, in Japanese. So this is just enormous. Now this is only about outreach. So now I'm talking about research and I can probably give a talk for a whole hour, so I have no time for that. So now I would like to quote Dr. Fry's remarks on the state of nutrition, and this is not to embarrass you. When he started his career in molecular nutrition, and do you remember what you said? <laughs> <clears throat> so Dr. Fry said, something went in. So that's nutrition, yeah. Something possibly resulted from it, yeah. So that's the health benefit. Yeah. But what happened in between was largely a black box. And what was lacking was mechanisms. And that is what Dr. Fry focused on in the LPI. And I think we're the institute that really focuses on mechanism of action of vitamins and nutrients. So that is the, how we started out and how Bolt started out. Now at the end of the career, because you decided to do something else in life, so, I, so during his scientific career, Dr. Fry published 355 papers. That's enormous. Well, it is more 
uh, impressive is that they were cited 19,000 times. This is enormous. Some people don't live long enough to get so many citations. <laughs> and now what some people, most people don't live long enough. So his papers have made an enormous impact in the field of molecular nutrition as indicated by the Hirsch index. And that is 71. That's very high. If you have ever submitted an application or you need to do a job interview, then 71 is just, that's just enormous. So I can testify that a Hirsch index of 71 is exceptionally high. Now let me give a few examples of what the research was about. So Dr. Fry has made several important discoveries on the role of vitamin C in cardiovascular disease initiation and progression. So in 1995, so this many years ago, he published a paper in the journal Biological Chemistry reporting that vitamin C protects low density lipoprotein against atherogenic modification. Yeah. In 1999, Dr. Fry published a paper together with Dr. Anitra Carr. Would you please wave and be recognized? Yeah, yeah that, you were together at the time, and who is in the audience today with a provocative title, Does Vitamin C Act as a Pro-Oxidant Under Physiological Conditions? So this, just this morning, I heard people ask that very same question. So this is nothing new. Dr. Fry thought about these things many, many years ago. Now that's not only that, this is only vitamin C. So Dr. Fry pioneered in the use of F2 isoprostanes as markers um, of in vivo oxidative stress. Yeah. So in 1995, again many years ago, he authored a paper on using plasma F2 isoprostane levels to demonstrate that smoking is a cause of oxidative stress. You know, you think it is, you take it for granted, right? If you smoke, you got oxidative stress, but how do you measure that? Now, Balzfrey developed methods that we can actually measure from a plasma sample. What is oxidative stress and how do you quantify that? Now, this seminal paper was cited over a thousand times. Yeah, you didn't know that, but it's that many. Yeah. So, Dr. Fry and his lab team at the Linus Pauling Institute have made important inroads into the mechanistic actions of phytochemicals and, phyto and polyphenols in particular. So he has helped LPI principal investigators determine mechanism of action of phytochemicals to mitigate chronic low-grade inflammation that lies at the root of many age-related diseases. So under the leadership of Dr. Fry, LPI researchers have broken new in, uh, ground in mechanistic research on catechins in tea, quercetin in onions, sulforaphane so in broccoli, and xanthoumol in hops. Yeah, we're all together in this, and I remember every week we had these uh, faculty meetings discussing this, and every time you went to these meetings, there was always some idea that came out and said, yeah, now I finally got an answer to my problem. And, I th and that was very good. At that. It's just very good. Now, the findings of that body of research have generated new knowledge in preventing pathological conditions such as cancer, metabolic syndrome, neurodegenerative disease, and cardiovascular disease. So LPI researchers could not have made those discoveries without the research and intellectual infrastructure that Dr. Fry built. And I'm now using Dr. Hagen's words from the first day from scratch because there was nothing there. So that's enormous. <clears throat> so I would like to close with another quote from Dr. Fry. So he said, um, a while ago, doing basic research is one thing. It's important, but it's not the end of the story. It is equally important to come out of the ivory tower and really help people make the right decisions regarding the use of diet and dietary supplements for their health. That's very true, and that really exemplifies what the award is all about. So in this uh, concluding sentence, I would like to ask Dr. Baltzfrey to come to the podium and receive the award. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
but a show for the audience. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, um, there's more. Do you know there used to be money involved in this? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not going to give you a check. I don't want a check. <laughs> I know that. But I can tell you that a donor has come forward and the donor has made a sizable donation into your Balz Frey and Doubt Fellowship Fund and that benefits students for, for many years to come. Wow. Now, I need to tell the audience that I can't say anything about the amount nor the identity of the donor because that donor wants to be uh, uh, anonymous, yeah. So let's uh, Baltz, thank Baltz one more th time. Okay. <laughs>